Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the fifth episode of the Digital Cargo Webinars for 2021. Uh, I'm Christoph Lambert, Project Manager at Digital Cargo at IATA. I will be your host today. Uh, so I welcome you to this, uh, to this webinar. Let's get started. So I believe some of you might have attended the first uh, webinars that we've uh, held uh, since the 22nd of June. Uh, as I said earlier, this is the fifth episode and we'll have a sixth and seventh episode um, in the, on the 8th of July and the 13th of July. Um, and we'll talk about that again in the end. Um, as a short introduction, uh, as it is always the same with uh, IATA's webinars, uh, we are under the competition law guidelines. Um, so it is uh, asked of the, from the, the panelists not to discuss any element of prices, including fares or service charges, any commissions, allocations of customers or markets, marketing plans, commercial terms, or any strategic decision, group boycotts, relationships with agents, airline solution providers, or any other third parties, and any other issue aimed at influencing uh, the independent business decisions of competitors. Thank all of the people for respecting that. Uh, for your information, uh, as it was with the previous webinars, this meeting is recorded for future use. Um, so all the, the materials along with the questions will be available shortly after the webinar uh, at the address below on the One Record e events. So you'll be able to, to see again the presentation, the panel discussion and the questions. Um, also, during the webinar, you through the GoToWebinar interface, you should be able to to ask any any questions that you that you may have, uh, they will be all uh, recorded um, in the Q and A. Um, and after the all the, the different introduction and presentations that we'll have during this webinar, we'll have a panel session uh, with our guests and a Q and A session as well, where we will try to address uh, all the questions that uh, that may arise. Um, before we start, uh, I'd just like to quickly introduce our guests today. Um, so we have Anke Buchhardt from Lufthansa Cargo. She's Senior Project Manager on Digital Transformation. Uh, she will introduce herself um, afterwards as she's presenting uh, some slides. Uh, we then have Robert Van Marysing, who is Director Channel Strategy and Optimization at Air France KLM Cargo, will also be presenting, uh, and Peter Roberts, as a head of distribution of IAG Cargo, will be one of our panelists as well. Um, so to, to kick off this webinar, um, I first do, um, I'll try to make it short, uh, an introduction on one record and the modernizing cargo distribution approach uh, that we have. Um, sorry in advance for you who are already very familiar with one record because there will be some kind of uh, introduction to the, to the concept uh, and where we are right now. Um, but don't worry, you still will learn some new things, uh, some new exciting things. So as an introduction, we all know that the international trade is about moving goods. Um, the air sector is a huge part of the international trade, um, but it is also about uh, sharing information. Um, as such, each year we have more than 7,800 tons of paper documents that are processed uh, just to give some information about the goods that are being transported. This is the equivalent of 80 Boeing uh, 747 fighters, uh, which is, as you can see, as you can imagine, uh, very, very huge. Um, and the vision that we have uh, when we're recording the digital cargo team um, is an end-to-end -end digital logistics and transport supply chain where data is easily and transparently exchanged in a digital ecosystem of our cargo stakeholders. And this is really what uh, One Record is about. Uh, also, a quick introduction on the concept. Um, so, the concept behind One Record is the idea of an end to end digital logistics and transport supply chain, and also moving from a peer to peer messaging model, uh, so, cargo in correct small messages and that you all know about, to a data sharing model relying on the virtual shipment record. So, before we had a very um, straightforward um, messaging model uh, where each stakeholder was were sending messages to each others and the idea today is that we have a virtual shipment record um, that is the center of everything and all stakeholders have access to any all the information at all time this is the vision that we have uh, and the concept behind one record 
the one record concept <coughs> is built upon three pillars uh, that are enabling to define what, how, and with whom data can be shared. The first pillar is data. Data is the, really the core of one record. Um, then we have the API, so the application parameter interface uh, that are being defined and standardized uh, within one record. And the security layer, which is also very important through a trust network. We go a, a very, uh, I give a ver very short introduction on those topics um, afterwards. Um, of course, um, all this concept is also based on the governance and rules and permission that needs to be clearly defined uh, so, so that each stakeholder know how to interact and know what to do in the supply chain. To the, the first um, short uh, introduction on one of the principles is the data model design principles. Um, as we said earlier, we are really trying to shift um, from a shipment centric approach to a piece centric approach. So this is our first step. Um, the, the aim is to have a piece level management. Uh, today, we mostly have a, a shipment level management. So this is really a change of mindset uh, for the whole industry. And with such, the piece uh, is at the center of the model that we have designed. This is really one of the most important things today. Then we have what we call the digital twin concept uh, that can be found again in the, uh, the multimodal uh, environments. Uh, the idea behind that is that physical entities that are actually existing have digital twins in the model. That means that there is a very easy understanding of the model and how objects interact with each other. For example, we have a piece, we have transport movement, we have a transport means that can be an, uh, an aircraft, for example. So this is very straightforward and very easy to understand and to implement. Then the third pillar that we have um, is the one single source of truth. Um, that means basically that the, there is a clear ownership of data that remains at its source. So it enhances transparency, but also data quality and integrity. This is also really an important part. The idea is to avoid, of course, uh, duplicating and replicating data everywhere on every server. Then the, the, the last principle that we have, which is also very important, is that one record is very data centric. Uh, what is important in that is that we are focusing on data and not documents. Document, we know that documents are the, the core of what is done today. Uh, especially when we see some important documents such as, such as the, the way bill. Uh, the idea with, behind one record is to use the, to use link data principles to avoid any redundancy of data and to make sure that we have everything at the, at the right place. Um, the, the scope of one record, it's, um, we try to make it very, very simple. Uh, we have here what we call the, the ontology cheese. Um, at the center, we have the airline core ontology, and then we have multiple scopes um, that resolve around the, the ontology. The idea behind the airline core ontology is that it's supposed to reflect the minimal, minimal requirements for the transport of general cargo. Um, and it's also detailed and extensive enough to enable piece level management and tracking. This is really an important part uh, that we have to, to, very keep, to keep in mind when designing um, the data model. Then we have what we call the add-ons. Uh, so as you can see, we have multiple there uh, and it's uh, not an exhaustive list. You can really uh, um, um, really add more add-ons in, in, the, in the end. Um, we have, for example, the cheapest method of instruction, the SLI, cargo distribution that we'll talk about um, more in details afterwards, CO2 emission, billing and settlement, interactive cargo. So many, many different scopes. Um, where, where we need some specific data elements um, for some specific business requirements. Um, how, how, how is this uh, transcribed into? Um, today we have one main uh, deliverable uh, related to the, the model. Uh, it is what we call the one record ontology. Um, so on the left hand side, you have the, uh, the more technical side uh, where we basically define all the objects, all the links that exist between the objects, all the definitions, all the descriptions, any restriction that may that may have that we may have between objects, uh, everything, uh, all the specifications basically can be found in this ontology. Uh, here we are using a tool that is called Protege, uh, which is uh, basically a user interface to ease the understanding and the maintenance um, of the, the ontology. 
And on the right-hand side, you can see uh, a model of the ontology, which is modeled by WebVal. And um, this is just a, an example to show, to show you how complex and how linked all the data are. Um, then on the second and third pillar, uh, which I will not uh, really explain too much here, um, because we, it has already been explained in previous um, white papers in sites. Um, but the API and security in a nutshell. So as you can see here, what we have, the concept that we have at, at the center is the Internet of Logistics that really makes the link between any stakeholders. On the left-hand side, you can see, for example, an airline cargo system, and then on the right-hand side, a full water cargo system. The first layer that we have are the one record standard APIs. The idea is that any stakeholder can communicate easily through uh, standardized APIs. Um, and all of this uh, is already specified today and has been specified by the API on security working group that is, uh, that is working on that. And the second layer that we have is a trust network. It's also very important. It's the, the main part of the security of one record. Um, and it comprised basically of three, three main things. So the identification through dedicated process, the authentication with uh, specific uh, certificates that we call one record certificates and the authorization um, meaning that all the, all the, the authorization is managed by data and server owners so authorization means uh, basically defining who uh, can have access to, to data and who can do what with uh, with different data that we, that we have um, then to, to move a bit for further on the, on the topic of the, the specific webinar, uh, I want to focus briefly on the modernizing cargo distribution approach um, that has been started last year. Uh, I will not go into too much details because um, the presentation that we'll have afterwards uh, and the panel discussion that we'll have will really um, focus on the MCD, but I just wanted to give you an introduction. And um, so basically we have a working group with distribution experts um, that aims to design the data model and API recommendations for one record. So basically defining all the business requirements that can be transcribed into technical specifications. Um, the main objectives um, of this working group uh, is first to have a standardized approach of distribution. We know that it's a, a very tricky to topic because it uh, directly impacts the commercial activities of, uh, of carriers and forwarders. Um, so we, we, we need to be to keep that in mind and make sure that we, we can come up with a standardized approach that respects uh, basically the competition guidelines uh, that we that I presented in the, in the introduction of this, uh, this webinar. Um, then the second objective is to make the most of data sharing capabilities with standardized data sets, meaning that to make sure that we come up with a standard approach, we need to also to make sure that customers and carriers can communicate through the same channels and through the, with the same data sets uh, to make sure that everyone understands each other. Um, and then our third objective is to try to automate and simplify distribution to make sure that all stakeholders can be able to plug in easily to any, to any one record server, any, uh, any service provider, and make sure that it's really easy to implement and e easy to, to communicate with any stakeholder. Um, as, a, as an example, so we had a, a first set of deliverables um, that came up last year. Uh, this is really a, a very uh, high level overview of what we what has been done. Um, the first uh, the first main deliverable is the standard sales and booking process. So this is really a high level uh, booking process that uh, sales and booking process that we have here. Um, we have uh, worked uh, as well on getting into much details, much more um, details for this one. Um, so this is really a, really a standardized approach that we, we are trying to, to come up with. And then we have on the right hand side the run record data model integration, meaning that we are trying to transcribe all the business requirements, all the data requirements into um, an actual integration within the run record data model. So as you can see, I don't, I don't know if it's really readable uh, on, the, on your screens on the, on the webinar, but we have all the, the different data objects uh, that really reflect um, the requirements uh, regarding distribution there. Um, shortly to, to, end, to end on this, um, the MCD uh, is, uh, is still working on the, on the topic. It's a very, very, um, um, very tricky top topic, very difficult topic, uh, but we are making progress. We have two, today two sub-working groups 
uh, that are dedicated first to work on the standard commodity list to facilitate customer carrier understanding of goods to be transported. Um, and then the fine tuning of processes and milestones uh, to be able to improve the API design and data model integration. The, the next steps that we have with, uh, with these working groups. Um, so first, we all need to focus on finalizing the standard definition, um, then derive processes into standard API models. So this is really one of the, our big next steps there. Uh, to make sure that everything we come up in terms of processes and milestones can be um, properly uh, transcribed into API models that are standard enough. Um, and then, of course, uh, not the least, but improve the one record data model and pilot uh, your project we have. This is also one, uh, our, our, one of our uh, next important milestones. So I, I will stop talking about the the MCD part now, uh, I will shortly give, give the end to, uh, to our guests. And just before that, um, if you want to find out more uh, on the standards, so we have a multiple, multiple places where we have some resources. Um, the first one is the developer portal uh, that you can access through the URL that is here at onerecord.iata.org, uh, where you will have access to tools such as the Ontology Viewer, RT Swagger API, some resources and they include um, specifications, uh, some learning documents, so all the white papers, the insights, or the how to, the guides um, that we have written to, to help uh, understanding and uh, implementing the, the, the standard, and showcase where we have some more information about the pilots and uh, the hackathon that uh, Arno on his webinar last week uh, really talked about a lot. Uh, the second important thing that we have is the GitHub repository that can be found on the address that is displayed here. Um, here, basically, you will have all the previous and current release of the standard. Um, so all the different materials that we, we have, uh, more, more, I would say, more on, uh, on the technical side. Um, it includes for the data model, the ontology and the logical data model. Also, json lg examples and all uh, documentation that are associated with every release. So, all the, for example, all documentation explaining the, the scope extensions, explaining the design principles uh, that are being updated every time there is a, a release. Um, and also the API and security specifications uh, and API models in JSON format, for instance. Um, in terms of um, frequency of release, today our, our aim is to have two main releases a year. Uh, that does not prevent us to, to have some smaller releases for, for fixes, for example. Um, but as we are working uh, as, a, as the one record task force um, that is, um, that is uh, meeting very regularly, at least today, uh, on a non-face-to-face -face basis, uh, we are trying to make, to make uh, improvements and progress uh, uh, all throughout the year. And also, if you also want to find out more on the standard, uh, do not hesitate to get in touch um, with IATA's digital cargo team. Uh, you can see that the, te the team has, uh, has changed a bit uh, since this uh, picture that was taken in last September during the last hackathon. Um, but still, that there, there are at least four of us that are still there today. So do not hesitate to get in touch with us. Um, then I will stop talking for, for, for now. Um, I will hand over to Anke Bohart, who is Senior Project Manager, Digital Transformation in Lufthansa Cargo and she will present us um, some developments in digital sales um, and the strategy of uh, Lufthansa Cargo. Okay, over to you. Okay. Wait shortly, I have to switch to my presentation. So can you see it? Just a question. Yeah, looks good. Okay, so um, warm welcome also from my side. Um, thank you for listening. I have the pleasure to present uh, shortly uh, the developments in digital sales uh, from Lufthansa Cargo. 
And um, just uh, before starting, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Anke Burchardt. I'm working for Lufthansa Cargo now since more than 20 years. So I experience already a lot uh, of different departments within our company. Um, but uh, my real uh, focus and pleasure since 2014, I guess it is, is um, that I'm leading projects in the digital uh, transformation environment. I um, did, for example, the project of uh, renewing our tracking system back and end, um, front end wise. And since, if, uh, since already two or three years, uh, we are dealing with APIs and I'm leading a project in the API environment. The biggest API we created were our smart booking API. So this is shortly to introduce myself. And uh, uh, as I'm uh, dealing with this topic of APIs, it's obvious why I'm working together with Yatta in the um, modernized cargo distribution group. And um, yeah, I really, um, uh, I, I really like to be part of that. And that's why, of course, I also like to be um, on the panel discussion today to share some uh, ideas um, about uh, modernized cargo distribution with you and discuss uh, with Peter and um, Robert. Okay, just uh, really a short intro in, uh, in our um, digital sales activities um, to, to, um, to start um, how an airline is tackling uh, with uh, such topics. As you all know, a digitalization is changing the world. That's why you are also today participating in, in this uh, webinar. And also in logistics, uh, we see, um, see already changes. So uh, we have the, com uh, the exponential increase of computing powers. Um, since uh, the 1970s already, and it's it's a really an, a great growth which we can make use of. Also in uh, in um, new technologies, uh, it is uh, already used in the logistics industry. Um, we all invest in cloud technology, in APIs, in robotics solution, in artificial intelligence, or in uh, industry of uh, things, just to uh, to mention a few of them. Of course, uh, what we also need to uh, consider is the so-called consumerization of B2B business, because all the people who are involved with logistics, they all have a private life, of course, and what they experience there is already far more advanced in terms of digitalization. Uh, they are used to customize solutions, um, to convenient solutions, and also to digital touch points. And this experience, what everybody uh, has in, in, their, in their private life, they also would like to experience the same level of convenience or cost customization in their business life. And that's where we need to react and uh, yeah, adapt our, um, our systems to. And last but not least, also within the logistics indust industries, a lot of new startups or marketplaces are uh, entering the market. So you can um, you can see, uh, especially in uh, in tracking or IoT solutions, a lot of startups arising, but also in marketplaces, uh, what we can see and what is especially important for uh, digital sales. So. Um, when considering now the last year where we are all in home office environment, etc., you can also see that um, that COVID even uh, accelerated this uh, this development. Um, we have um, a McKinsey uh, study across, among all industries, not just the logistic ones, and they found out that um, the traditional um, channel, uh, sales channels, of course, are decreasing, whereas this digital interaction is getting more important, uh, not only the video email chat functionalities, but also the digital sales services. And of course, what is uh, what is even more important? Uh, nearly 80% of uh, of the questioned people say that this development will sustain longer than uh, than one year after COVID. So this will remain basically, and that's why we all need to react to that. And um, yeah, we as Lufthansa Cargo also um, uh, sorry uh, react to that. Um, we have um, founded, for example, a digital sales department to really um, um, put more emphasis on our digital um, sales channels to enable fast, reliable and um, convenient way of doing business. 
So um, three uh, very important issues for us is when we talk about digital sales, of course, it must be a user friendly um, a digital sales must be user friendly and based on customer needs because only customers who um, who think a digital um, digital channel is of value for them, they are uh, they will also use it. So this is the the main importance of any a digital channel to to first find out what does our customer want and then design the channel accordingly. Of course, digital sales also means that you uh, that you uh, will have automated um, data based uh, data driven solutions and um, you definitely need uh, digital cooperation to, uh, to intensify cooperation with all involved in the logistics chain. What does it mean for digital sales in, a, in, a, um, in, in our environment? It means that uh, we're um, having a so-called multi-channel approach, meaning we're not just offering one, uh, uh, one sales channel to our customers, but we want to be there what, where the customer wants to buy. So, the, uh, so if the customer wants to buy uh, in a personal way, we will satisfy these needs. But of course, we also offer him um, the, the, our own website, the e-booking system. Um, we also um, have direct connects. Um, of course, we started with EDI connections already some years ago. But uh, nowadays, um, if a forwarder wants, he can also direct uh, directly connect to us via API to get offers and bookings and of course uh, we collaborate with marketplaces or other intermediates so uh, to to give it the best customer experience we can um, to give you some examples what, what what are we doing when we talk about for example the user friendly solutions we are currently investing heavily in our e-booking system so we included already on our own website and also on api sales um, the dynamic pricing real-time booking functionalities and uh, we uh, designed a new ui so a new interface a new front end for uh, for our e-booking system um, yet yeah, to uh, to really offer added value to the customer Another example, what we're doing is, um, which is for today maybe the even more important point, um, investing in digital corporations, meaning um, we create APIs for direct connections to Lufthansa Cargo, and um, we create um, um, more APIs, not just the booking API, but we also have the, a routing API in place, or um, two tracking APIs, either via a pull or a push possibility. To manage these APIs, we also offer an, an, an API portal. So if you would like to see um, the complete API portfolio, you always can go to the portal page um, where all APIs are shown and explained. So this is um, to, to foster digital corporations. But this is uh, what what we're doing uh, at the moment. So, but to, to drive success completely in the logistics, uh, digital logistics, um, as I already said, you have to uh, keep customers first. You also have to acknowledge the value of uh, of IT of data. You have to adapt um, quicker than we may maybe used to um, in in the in the last years. So iterate in short cycles. You also should think of um, working maybe a little bit different than in the past. So to see um, digital companies, how they work, learn from other industries and, um, and their um, adapt uh, learnings to your own way of working, but also on, on your own way of uh, how leading projects, whatever. And um, it's coming at the last point, but maybe one of the most important ones, you need to have a uh, kind of industry approaches. You have to standardize, you have to align on industry level, maybe also to think of data sharing um, models. So um, there are a lot of things you can do only on an industry level. Yeah, and that's why we're together in this IATA MCD uh, uh, group. And um, I'm happy to, to discuss uh, with the others today about how we can move forward the MCD um, idea. Yeah, this should uh, be uh, just a short intro from my side, and I would like to hand over back to Christoph.
Thank you. Thank you, Anka. I think you, uh, everyone should be able to see my screen back, back now. Um, thanks a lot for this uh, for this presentation and introduction. Very interesting as well. Uh, of course, we, we go back on, the, on those topics in the, uh, on the second half um, of the webinar. And now I'm very happy to, to hand over to Robert Van Marissen from Air France Canada. Uh, we'll talk about the modernizing cargo distribution, the road towards a standardized future. So, Robert, over to you. Thank you, Christoph. And if I'm not mistaken, do you see my screen? Yes, we do. I think it goes. But do you see my slide? Yeah, we can see everything. All right. Yeah, I see myself. All right. But then I start. Okay, thank you, uh, Christoph. Um, my name is Robert van Rissing, and I'm responsible for uh, the channel strategy within Air France uh, KLM Cargo. I've been working in this company already for almost 14 years. Um, I'm coming from the passenger uh, part of the company, but uh, since two, two and a half years, I work for cargo, and uh, I enjoy it quite uh, extensively. So, uh, and I'm also working on modernizing cargo distribution. So. I would also thank IATA to allow uh, talking about this topic. Um, mod car modernizing cargo distribution is quite a journey so far. We have started it in Singapore in March uh, 2019, I can remember, and, and quite a lot has happened uh, so far. And um, yeah, we have moving into uh, working groups with, groups with both airlines and forwarders. Uh, and, and there are a lot of participants to, to find solutions. And the start went, went quite well. And I think the first drafts of designing a, a model, but also a data model, uh, went quite uh, uh, impressively quick. Uh, and still working groups are joining forces, like you also already said yourself, to optimize the outcomes and to further deep dive in, into solutions. But I think we are also uh, yeah, at, at a point that we should move into a second phase of, of the project and, and to uh, the coming 10 minutes uh, or so, I, I, I want to tell more about uh, Air France KLM and the journey uh, of modernizing cargo distribution into a road uh, towards uh, a standardized future indeed. So, let me start a little bit uh, back in, in those days. I mean, four or five years ago, uh, Air France KLM uh, became highly interested in digitizing the interaction uh, between forwarder and airlines uh, during the commercial uh, journey. But uh, I think, uh, and it is still practiced today, request and apply, apply reply messaging uh, mostly requires the forwarder to maintain a lot of reference data. For example, error bill stock, connect, uh, connection times, rate sheets, carrier products, and those kinds of requests and reply communication was mostly done only via one channel, which is for most airlines done via customer services. And email, phone, it all worked quite well. Um, but I think on Air France KLM, we questioned ourselves if this could not become far more online. So we were wondering why Air Cargo was not yet starting digitization, while in any other industry, a direct online channel was common practice and even based on dominant and using uh, modernizing technologies. And in addition, we realized that the way our industry was sharing data between parties was much behind those other industry, in, uh, industries. And Air France KLM was wondering if we could change the interaction with our customers from offline to direct online. And by making sure that all our processes were connected in both channels, offering exactly the same information, but also the single point of truth. So our aim was to reduce the inefficiency uh, of, for both forwarders, but also for our own staff, so we could better focus on delivering a personal service and becoming far more easy to do business with. Uh, and that challenge, I think, uh, here uh, in, in Air France KM Cargo, we all uh, accepted. So we moved into our challenge, uh, and via the spirit of, I, guess, I think, a smart startup, um, we started to build our own direct online channel, which is currently uh, and in the industry well known as MyCargo. It was quite disruptive at the time and for the industry when we started, uh, and we were building with the full confidence that the cargo industry was ready to move online. But it was not only, only our own belief, uh, because when we had customer conversations, 
we clearly understood that the forwarders were also willing to go online. Um, but it was more the question, not the question on when it would come, but how it would uh, come and how the industry would digitize. So this whole how part uh, was exactly the challenging part uh, after all. So the question which wonders us as a company was, could we change the way an airline provides answers to the forwarders question when it comes to a quotation result or a booking result? So moving from a forwarder who is doing a, a, a shot in the dark based on static data to provide a bookable option based on dynamic data. In other words, going away from the situation that a forwarder has to combine schedule sheets, rate sheets, uh, by himself to compose the request options by himself in advance and hoping that the shipment will be accepted much later in the process and even the, the airline had to do a man, manual uh, uh, check and even worse the forwarder had the risk that the rate they requested was not even available at, uh, anymore at, at the time no i think our vision was to make that much more efficient and much more reliable and to take away a lot of inefficiency for the, in the forwarders in this forwarder process. So our vision was to give us your shipment details and we give you all the answers. Uh, flight options, available rates, uh, we call that dynamic pricing, and even better, a real-time capacity check so we can immediately confirm your booking. However, a couple of years building, we realized that our move, moving train has gone quickly over time and for part of the industry, could follow. But for a big part of the industry, we still face nah, huge, huge challenges today. By connecting to forwarder TMS directly, we still face diff different setups based on the way the industry was used to work and to use static data. And systems with their own business rule logic not matching how we as Air France KLM built our API to get to a dynamic answer and bookable options. What we face is the challenge. On the one hand, the digital development moving forward. On the other hand, forwarding systems, which are not yet designed to consume dynamic data via APIs. It means that where others are even debating on legacy replacement and implementing new ways of working, others are far in advance and creating a digital solution. But not everyone uh, is used uh, so, uh, by that so far. And it is quite uh, interesting that uh, Anke is confirming also a bit the, the storyline I have on this slide, because at the same time, we see a big movement in our customer needs. Every staff member of a forwarder who is requesting an airline quote or making an airline book, a booking is also dealing with online businesses in their own private environment. They experience a certain online journey when they book a hotel or when they buy a book online or when they buy tickets for an event or a theater. From those experiences in other industries and from their personal behavior, they expect an even more and more B2C experience in our B2B environment. Therefore, it also becomes a natural need uh, in our industry to go online. So forwarders employees do want to have the ability of self-service on a shipment rather than being dependent on a call center. Information they receive during the commercial journey should be reliable. It is the important to trust the rate that they get from the airline and the status update of their shipments should be real time. Every interaction between a forwarder and an airline needs to be relevant. Why receiving, for example, communication about routes uh, uh, where a salmon uh, forwarder is not, not active on? Uh, we, we often use this example, but I think it's, it's quite uh, a good one. A personalization via online channels is also a hot topic. I think in any industry, so we, so we need to make sure that based on data analytics, we much better recognize the customer and fulfill their need, but also bring the expertise when it becomes complex. So the only way of doing so is to make data and systems connected. For me, if you ask me, modernizing cargo distribution is trying to link static data processes into dynamic data processes. It brings together static data sharing into dynamic data sharing. 
and it moves the B2B experience into a much more B2C uh, experience way of working. And last, it is trying to, to do things differently in terms of human behavior and interpersonal business relationships. So modernizing cargo distribution is for me not only about technical connectivity, but it is also about, it is more than that. It is how an industry can all provide from becoming more cost efficient, but most important, customer centric. It is exactly why modernizing cargo distribution has become so important, uh, uh, so important, and I think we all have, can benefit from it. Um, sorry, my slide is moving. Yeah. And that is why we asked uh, IATA for making API development an important industry topic. As first mover, you cannot change the industry by yourself. I think more and more airlines and forwarders have become ready to go in the same direction uh, as the group who is working on, on modernizing cargo distribution. But the complexity remains. In addition, what we think mostly is that the complexity is not only at the technical part, but on how to build solutions. But it is also about a way of working, adapting each other's behavior to become for, far more efficient, real time and mainly reliable. People simply can't tell one another how to adapt behavior by technology. But in an agreed setting, we should be able to discuss and agree how to respectively adapt together. And that is why my vision is to see modernizing cargo distribution as an industry alliance. As we know them from the airline partnerships like SkyTeam and One World and Star Alliance. But in this case, with forwarders and airlines together. In addition, today we already have what we call a group of the willing participating modernizing cargo distribution. But we have to grow with participants. More parties should step in airlines, forwarders, software providers, and even when parties are not ready to make the move or to adapt because their first start is to replace legacy, at least join the group to find out the right requirements, to build your systems and to prepare your organization on the challenges, both technical and human, in order to make a much more understandable change process internally. Besides, as a group, Altogether, we have to position modernizing cargo distribution to promote how the whole industry can benefit from it. The goal is to have an open API standard which can be used by every party without any licensing cost. Next to efficiency, cost savings, increase of relevance, also new business opportunities occur. At the same time, sharing data makes also much more visible what behavior, uh, what behavior between parties is and can be used to improve relationships and the engagement between forwarder and, 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 and airline. Much more than we do today, so also that will ch change from more st static relationship into a dynamic relationship. And I think that is the most, uh, the, the most beautiful part. I am a full believer of modernizing cargo distribution. Uh, and I think Air France KLM will always sponsor this topic moving forward, despite the complexity. Like in, uh, in our first belief in setting up our own direct online channel as a first mover, we also believe in the benefits of modernizing cargo distribution for the total uh, cargo industry. Thank you. Christophe, you take it back? Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Robert, uh, for the inspiring pitch, speech uh, and for sharing with us the, um, the topic on the on IFKM side. Um, so as of now, uh, I think it's time to go to our panel discussion. Um, so our panel discussion should will, will be uh, mostly focused on cargo distribution. Uh, which are the two topics Anke and Robert just presented. Um, our third panelist uh, is Peter Roberts, uh, head of distribution at IAG Cargo. So I think we'll switch to panel mode. Um, so I think I'll just stop sharing my screen. Uh, I invite all of you to, to share your webcams so that we can see the four of us. Should be all right.
Okay, so um, as a, as a follow-up to, to this in, in interesting presentation, so let's start the discussion. Um, I think you, you you know the drill, so I have a few a couple of questions um, to to ask each of you. Um, you are of course all, all are all invited to to react to uh, to each other's answers. Uh, that's the whole point of the the panel discussion. Um, before we start, maybe. Peter, can you introduce yourself? Thank you, Christoph, um, and thank you, Robert and Anka, for your presentations earlier. It's uh, it's great to hear the um, the common challenges we faced as an industry and, and our different approaches to, uh, to tackling them individually, and now this common drive to a standardised solution. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us, and thank you, Christoph, for the invitation to participate. My name is Peter Roberts, um, head of distribution for IAG Cargo. IG Cargo is the cargo arm of the International Airline Group, which comprises British Airways, Iberia, Aer Lingus, Welling and Level. Um, and this year has been a, a good year for us in that it's our 10th year anniversary since British Airways Cargo and Iberia Cargo joined. And I've been part of IG Cargo for the last eight years, with the last three years focusing on uh, our distribution channels, and particularly building up and strengthening our digital distribution via igcargo.com and our API channels connecting not only with customers directly but also with uh, intermediary partner platforms uh, in a similar way but in a different different approach from uh, Robert and Anker. And so this is a really important approach uh, and really important topic for the industry to drive efficiency for us as an industry in a whole. So looking forward to an interesting panel discussion. Thank you, Peter, for your introduction. Um, then I think we can get started. My, my first question will be to, to Anka. Um, if we are looking at the situation, what do you think, um, what part of the distribution process is still manual versus the digital aspect? Uh, first, in your company, so from your point of view, from a Lufthansa point of view, and do you think it's really the, it's the same for the, the whole industry? Okay. So um, when we at Lufthansa think of our offer and booking process, uh, well, the standard process for standard products um, such as general cargo is already quite advanced in digitalization. So the process uh, has a has a quite maturity already in digitalization. Uh, there are um, digital quotes, um, so um, so-called dynamic uh, rates available. Also, backend processes are um, highly automated when it comes to revenue management processes, um, whatever. And I think, um, yeah, um, the possibility um, then to book online is also well advanced in the complete industry. Robert was focusing on uh, on I think 1980 or whenever when um, when you were the first ones uh, to offer um, booking possibilities via online uh, channels. But nowadays uh, this is kind of an industry standard already. So most of the airlines, or let's say a lot of airlines, are offering a web page with schedule uh, of with an online schedule with online booking and tracking, for example. Um, but um, what you can see is um, where um, where we still are, I guess, also as an industry quite manual is the more complex a product gets, uh, the more difficult it is to digitalize uh, uh, these processes. So thinking of shipping um, animals, valuables, or even um, um, specific container modes, um, this is all uh, quite uh, quite far more difficult to digitalize, and that's why there are still a lot of manual processes. Um, also, these are pro products where um, maybe the need of the customer for consulting is um, high, more advanced, and that's why um, this uh, this might be even a good idea to uh, to keep it manual. Because what I would like to say, we do not want to uh, digitalize uh, all processes, but you have to see where really it makes sense and where it adds value to the customer. So this is uh, this is a very important. Digitalization should not be an end in itself. Thank you. Any, anyone wants to react on that? Do more, more, more feedback? Yeah, I, I tend to agree with uh, Anke Christoph, and, and I, but I also think that um, the, the huge challenge uh, on, on uh, going uh, from manual to, to uh, digital 
is that that still we need to close the gap in 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 software solutions which are in the industry and they they are still sometimes based on on a way of working and that's what i also said in in my presentation is that we we have to discuss not only uh, uh, moving technically uh, digital but also in the way of working and i'm not sure if the whole industry is on the same page there uh, although i see a lot of airlines investing to go online uh, and to to uh, to to serve the, the customer as much uh, as we can on based on the customer need also in the different channels but i i also still see a lot of inefficiency uh, in that interaction and i hope that uh, that, that moving to digital we can much more discuss also the way of working together okay so i think that's, that's a good bridge to uh, transition to one of the the next questions um so i'll, I'll keep that hanging uh, i just had a, one question to to peter before we go to, to this specific topic um Peter, so you said in your intro that, um, of course, AEG is uh, strongly interested in, uh, in investing into the, the digitization of cargo distribution. Um, can you tell us a bit more on that uh, as a cliffhanger? <laughs> yes, of course. Um, so a lot of what we do is about you know, always moving forward and always offering our customers the right choice. So giving our customers the option to book in the way that they want to book, whether it's online via our website, via the contact center, or via a third party platform directly within their system. So to offer those choices, we need to have systems and capabilities that enable that. Um, I tend to agree with Anker and Robert that the simpler a booking, the more um, easy it is to digitize both for us as an airline and also for a forwarder to have all of the information that they need to have that fully processed and have the confidence that the shipment's going to fly as planned. Uh, the more complex a booking, the more likely it is that it's going to need manual processing for both, both sides. So if it's a complicated booking, putting that time into manual processing is, is time well invested for both parties. Where it's um, you know, very easy to digitalize, it becomes much more efficient for both parties to, to offer a digital solution. And so this is about offering our customers the right level of choices so that they can book their freight wherever they are, whatever time of day it is, you know, whatever their needs happen to be. Um, but also make sure that we're doing it in such a way that um, over time we can shift the processes both for us and for our, for our customers to adopt the digital tools. Because as Robert rightly points out, digitalization is still quite patchily uh, embedded in the industry. And so we as an industry have a lot of legacy processes. People stay in the industry for a long time. And we're not only introducing new tools and new capability, but also changing people's habits and behaviors. And there's therefore you have to spend time not just on creating these great digital tools, but also making sure that the digitalization is embedded and the benefits of that digitalization are demonstrated to all parties. And that's where the, the benefits will then start to be realized. Having the tool, it has no value if it's not used. And so that's where the, the investment needs to come, both in terms of time and technology. And that leads to my, my next question, which is uh, related to that. Um, I wanted to ask you, Anke, what in your, in your perspective, what are the, the main challenges um, that we will force, that we will face, excuse me, to, to enforce the digitization of cargo distribution? Yeah, I think a lot of uh, challenges we were already mentioning either during the presentations or uh, answering the first questions. Um, just to, to summarize again, you really have to, first of all, focus on the processes where it really adds value to the customer, uh, digitalizing. It's, it's uh, as I said, it's not, a, not something um, for itself. Uh, it needs to add value and then you can think of how, uh, how to digitalize it. And um, of course, it is always uh, also a little bit tricky 
um, a balancing act, you could say like this, um, standardization on the one hand um, and in individual necessities of customers on the other hand. So how many individual needs can we really digitize? Is that possible? Or where do we, where do we, we leave these options open to really offer the customer customized services, which will be definitely more difficult to, uh, to digita digitalize? I mean, I, I was referring in my presentation to the point that customers expect um, what they know from their private life, and from their private life, they know, know a lot of cus uh, consumerization. And um, expecting this in our industry, that will make it far more complicated for us to really digitalize uh, these processes. It's it's possible because looking in, under, uh, in other industri industries, you can definitely see that they can do it, but it will be uh, a far, a lot more complicated. And you were asking for challenges, and that's what I see as a challenge. And um, third point I would like to add as a, as a major challenge is the huge amount of stakeholders in our logistics chain. So uh, let's say the forwarders, the shippers, the airlines, uh, the truck companies, other authorities, uh, like customs, whatever. There are so many people involved in the uh, logistics chain. And if just we as an airline digitalize something, it is uh, co completely in vain. I mean, you, you've seen with e it takes time and time and it, it, it doesn't work out. If just an airline says, okay, from now on we do e the, the forwarders need to change processes. Um, the other airlines also need to go that way. So this is really a challenge. The number of parties involved in, uh, in our industry uh, to, to move forward uh, with speed in digitalization. Thank you. Thank you for this, uh, this great summary. It makes me think that um, indeed what, what I think and what, what, uh, what I faced when I joined the digital cargo team, not, not, not coming from the, the cargo side, is the, uh, the huge number of uh, stakeholders that we have uh, if we compare to the passenger because the passenger can move from itself from a place to another place, but cargo needs someone to, to handle it. And uh, for waters, need shippers, need, and there's so many, so many, so many stakeholders involved uh, that it really makes it much more complicated, you know, to to, to work for a, for a common standard for the industry because the industry is not only the airlines; it's the whole uh, supply chain of stakeholders. And uh, of course, uh, Christophe, if if I may ask, then eh, maybe may good to add to this discussion because can, can you then explain us a little bit more on the on the role of what IATA can do? Uh, I mean, eh, when we started modernizing cargo distribution, I, I think I, I, with a group of the uh, the willing, eh, like like IAG and, and and Lufthansa were there also there, but also forwarders. I think we, in a very short time, we made a major step in 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 setting a first agreement to the standard eh, of the of the of designing the processes, but also to make the first uh, design of the data model. So and of course it, it takes time to further improve and and of course we need to talk about uh, interrelationships and behavior and how to adopt this, but but how do you see IATA playing a role in in bringing the whole industry together on this topic? Um, that's a very complicated question because you know there there are also some associations for the shippers for the waters so we have also to, to work with other uh, other um, I would say um, not identical but the same same kind of associations. Um, the good thing that we have uh, in the, um, at least on the, on the on the scope I'm working on, on the one record scope, that we have um, many major stakeholders that are involved in all the areas, areas of uh, one record, either uh, carriers of course, but we have forwarders of, as well, we have shippers as well, uh, we have service providers as well, so I, I, we think a good, uh, a good panel of, um, of industry stakeholders that, that allow us to get um, all of the all of the feedbacks and all of the, the perspectives, you know, in the, the way the, what we're working on, and we, we may have some direct access to to some other associations, but uh, having uh, having important forwarders within our ta our task force also help us, you know, to, to get access to to those associations and uh, to come with a stronger voice, uh, especially when we talk about. Um, standardizing things that are not only carrier um, you know only uh, 
career specific and on, on the topic that we're working on, on the one record as a whole, not only the modernizing cargo distribution, but one record as a whole, uh, we, we have some strong uh, involvement from uh, major, st major stakeholders. And I think that's, that's a good way to move forward. We, we always have some, you know, some milestones uh, to work on with some other industries, but we, we think we have a, today at least a, a good panel of representatives uh, for that to happen. That's what we hope for. And uh, for example, if, if you look at uh, Hank Rollo, who is the head of Digital Cargo, he, he, he has participated in uh, many webinars in the past, uh, in, even in the very recent past, uh, with uh, the DCSA so or, or associations like that. So we also are present in, uh, in those kind of, um, of webinars and associations. So that really helps us to, to move forward on, on those topics. Right. And that, um, that that really leads to my next question. That was uh, indeed for you, Robert, <laughs> um, about the um, the place of uh, carriers in uh, our approach, um, because we know that when we talk about technology, it has, um, we have a, um, an industry that has also been led by uh, service providers, who have, uh, of course, have uh, some business uh, incentives uh, in you know in uh, in providing services like that, um, but how do you see the the, the place of carriers today uh, in in this uh, ecosystem, and how do you see that evolve in the future? No, I th what I th what I think is that that uh, like in the in the cargo logistics chain, uh, the airline is 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 part of it, and it's also in the in the IT uh, uh, landscape. I would say. Um, I, I think what, what what I see is that airlines are always focusing on on making processes uh, efficient, uh, not only maybe because of their own business model, but also uh, because in in this case the relationship between forwarder and 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 airline can change uh, to, to to much more customer centric. And now we are much much maybe too much busy with with finding and connecting uh, the right answers to the questions uh, in in a, a far too much static way and i think airlines want to focus much more on that b2c experience uh, and to to give a customer centric experience to the customer not only personalized but also in servicing but also uh, in in efficiency so what i think if i look at modernizing cargo distribution i am uh, if if i look from the industry perspective i'm very happy that airlines want to move this way uh, to serve the customers much more, uh, uh, much better than than we have done maybe today, and and we want to take responsibility to to uh, focus on customer needs. And I think technology is supporting that. And by by um, uh, evaluating uh, our internal processes and to conclude that we can do that far more dynamic and more efficient. Uh, that that's what we want to offer to the industry so i i would say uh, the role of, of us as airlines is to to offer efficiency to the industry and and, and uh, that that's why i preach uh, that that the whole industry please embrace that uh, because i think uh, again we can all benefit from it i would like to add robert um i see the place of airlines you can't say we have one place i would say um, there are airlines which are uh, advancing and trying to push the industry, others uh, maybe a little bit more reluctant, maybe also due to a different business model. And the same is also taking place on forwarder side. So there are forwarders who are really pushing forward uh, the whole industry in, to uh, in uh, towards a distri uh, sorry, d digitalization, whereas other others are still very reluctant and they keep their manual processes as long as they can. So um, there's no, uh, we are very advanced, the others not. But I think where we all need to be aware of that there are coming more and different uh, participants in our market, seeing uh, market price, um, places arising, uh, seeing uh, new technology providers, IoT providers, startups, whatever. And what I think where we need to have it at least in mind or uh, look at the development is not that they take over our role and that they in, uh, at the end um, 
dictate us where to go. And that's why I, I really like that we as, uh, as airlines now get together and push the industry towards digitalization with this MCD approach. Yeah, the complexity, uh, Anke, you, you, in fact, you are right. I, I, I agree to that. Uh, the, 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 there are advanced airlines and less advanced, uh, same for forwarders. But what you also see happening is that all these developments are, are happening in the industry because um, also at the forwarder level, not all forwarders are having uh, defined yet what their final solution will be. Uh, so sometimes you see those forwarders uh, using all those channels. Eh? They use uh, the direct online channels, they use the uh, software providers, eh? they make also use of, of third-party platforms. And that makes it for, for airlines quite difficult uh, to, to understand what, the, what, what those forwarders want. Uh, and, and that's why I think as, 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 an, as a group of airlines, yeah, we, we should offer the, 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 the customer relationship and focus on the customer relationship uh, and because customer engagement in the end is, is mostly important. And if we can provide that in the best way via our uh, API or direct uh, online development, uh, that, that's, that's where I think that uh, forwarders can most, mostly benefit from. Yes. Thank you. Um, okay, and my, my next question is for, for Peter then. Um, current cargo distribution, uh, digitalization is leading to more distribution channels um, on any stakeholders, but also on the, the fact that we have multiple stakeholders that are involved that are developing and implementing their own solutions, own services. Um, what impact do you see in terms of implementation and maintenance for all of these channels, especially from, from the customer point of view? Do you think it will become difficult? Thank you, Christopher. I think um, um, just a continuation of the, of the theme that Hank and Robert were talking about is, you know, offering choice to the customers is part of having good customer services, you know, being where the, the customer wants to be. And our customers are not an individual. You can't characterize a forwarder who's multiple branches across the globe as, yes, they're one customer, but they're not one individual. So their needs are different and we do need to, to service those needs. Um, I think the role of the new marketplaces and distribution platforms that have really uh, grown in number over the last couple of years is um, partly around customer choice. They, they fill a need. They're also able, because of their, their specific role, to connect to multiple airlines using multiple different uh, disparate standards and bring together a, a common customer solution. Um, so part of their rise is because there is no standard in this in, for having modern cargo distribution, uh, but they will continue to exist and evolve as standards come in alongside each airline's own uh, direct channel. And I think then there'll be degrees at which um, customer personalization and making uh, the customer relationship deeper and richer in, in direct channels will be slightly different from uh, the channels which are more marketplace focused. So they uh, fulfill a really good role in terms of um, offering customer choice, they sit alongside and not separate from our own direct channels. And I think um, maintaining uh, relationships from an airline side outwards become, is not really the challenge because we have our own standard that we can maintain our own standard. The challenge then becomes on the forwarder side or the marketplace side to deal with each of the different standards and the different airlines that have implemented solutions separately. So by creating a set of standards, which is what modernizing cargo distribution is all about, and, and I echo Robert's point that we've got a really good process flow defined, and we're, the, the coalition of the willing are defining these standards in a really quick way, although we're um, implementing them and rolling them out will be the next big challenge. And once those are implemented, once they are in place, and then we'll continue to refine, as, as Anka made the point in her presentation, that technology with the new technology of solutions can evolve quite rapidly we will evolve as the needs of our customers evolve and the digitalization opportunity grows and gets deeper as more booking types become digitalized and we start with the simple and we'll grow out to you know from the 20 percent to the 50 to the 80 to the 95 percent of bookings over the time uh, i think having that role in partnership with marketplaces 
will accelerate, digital, accelerate digitalization in our industry because it's part of customer choice and part of, part of our good customer offering. Okay, thank you. And, and I like the idea, Peter, that you said, um, uh, looking at the forwarder, um, we always talk the forwarder, but the forwarder maybe consists of one more than thousand branches and with different needs and uh, ideas, different markets. I mean, looking in, at markets in Af Africa, where it's uh, where our colleagues always inform us, it's so difficult to, to go with your digital ideas to our cu uh, customers here, uh, here back in our home markets. Um, what I what I see is um, that's really interesting um, how we really get across there with standardization. I mean, uh, the, the forwarders see that it, it's also uh, very valuable for them, but it's even difficult for them to get all the branches on on one on one track on one strategy. And I, I'm really curious uh, to see how our in, uh, how our industry will look like within five years, ten years. That will be interesting. Yeah, I think it will take, it'll definitely take time. And I think this comes back to the, the point that Robert was raising earlier with Christoph in terms of how IATA can work with the other um, industry stakeholder associations and places, people like the marketplaces to you know, accelerate the adoption of digital standards as they come through. Because the standardization of the technology is a benefit more for the customer, the people who are using those standards than it is for the airline. We um, Definitely. want to have that standard because it removes the barrier for yeah. digitalization and then customers enjoy those benefits of having more efficient processes um, and you know focusing their time on the really complex while the simple is digitalized. Yeah. I mean, we are having already our standards, you, but you unfortunately have another one than we uh, and than Robert, and that's the complexity for our customers. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, before we go to the Q&A session, we have a, a couple of questions, not, not too much uh, as of now. Uh, I have one last question I'd like, I'd like to ask to, to Robert. Um, so we, we know and we discussed that, that the distribution is a very sensitive topic because it directly impacts uh, your commercial activities and the competitiveness and the relationship you may have with uh, customers, and not only forwarders, but all customers. Um, with that in mind, what benefits do you see in the one record and MCD approach um, and the industry taking a strong position on, on distribution? Do you think we, we have a, the standardization is a is the solution or one of the, the main solutions? Now, indeed, like you said, distribution strategies are, are um, sensitive. I mean, you can make the difference uh, uh, there. Uh, I, I want to use the example of, of uh, now the travel agents uh, who went uh, quite late, late online. Uh, most of them lost it uh, and went uh, bankrupt. So here you can see that uh, a good distribution strategy to make the difference towards your customer can be highly important. Uh, but I don't, next to the sensitivity of competitive advantage, I would also say there is a sensitivity of the demand of the market. So if your customer determines that he moves online and you are not there, then, then I think uh, the, 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 your customer will find its way anyway uh, to, to, to others who are offering those products and services. But I think uh, talking about a standardized way of distribution, doesn't necessarily mean that you give away your competitive advantage. Uh, I think that that it, it will also, uh, next to the efficiency which it can bring and, and, and cost savings, I think it can also bring new corporations and relationships. So with, with standardizing, uh, let's say, the, 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 uh, via a data model and being able to share data much more easy, I think as a whole for the whole industry, uh, it, it will bring much more new business opportunities, and and that's why I would say, um, and while while keeping your your uh, advantage on on your distribution strategy. So I think um, it for me it's not a risk. I, I think it uh, can develop uh, the industry much more interesting uh, with having new uh, business relationship and partnerships. 
Um, I think also there's there's this piece around um, we're talking about modern cargo distribution, but also that sits alongside one record. And Christoph, in your presentation, you made the point that one record is the digital twin of physical freight. But at the booking stage and the distribution stage, the freight doesn't necessarily exist yet. So you're, you're creating the data model for notional future freight, freight that will be, and creating an easy mechanism by which customers can provide the data that they have pre-booking, updating that data and making sure that the data is consistently improved and clearer up until the point where freight arrives and we have then the digital twin and the physical freight in the same place. But modernizing cargo distribution gives benefit to, the, to all parties in the chain by allowing that clearer flow of data so that ultimately the data for the freight is in the right place and it, it'll allow, it'll drive benefits for all involved. It's, it's one of these you know, great win-win things if we can get the standards right, get them embedded and, and pick up the digitalization, um, you know, embed the, the processes internally and with our partners. I would like to add to Robert, um, when standardizing, I mean, this doesn't mean that we standardize our products and it's, it's definitely not meant to, to do that. We see this in passenger airlines, uh, everybody keeps their own, uh, their own products. What we do standardize is, is the way how we communicate with each other. And I think this is a very important uh, difference and point you can make and where you can see, okay, commun uh, if everybody speaks the same language, then it is uh, it is easier for all people involved, but it doesn't mean that uh, that they also need to offer the same things. Of course not. This shall remain how it is today. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, that's a good uh, good transition to the uh, to the Q and A session because we had uh, a question that uh, was directly that: uh, how, how do you avoid that air cargo will be commodified by uh, by what we're doing, the booking portals and stuff? And I think you you, you greatly answered the uh, this question by by saying that uh, it it will benefit to to everyone um, easing the, the communication the multi-channel communication uh, also trying to engage to um, new strategies or at least evolving strategies uh, with, with the way you're you're interacting with uh, with all the stakeholders. Um, one of one of the questions was that. Um, this leads to almost full rate transparency for the forwarders. Um, I would say yes and no. That's that, that's a bit the idea also that what we have in uh, at least on the on the digital cargo team. You know the the full the full transparency of, of the data and uh, and what, what we what we exchange. Um, I would be interested to have your, your point of view on that on the, the transparency about the rates for the for the forwarders. Well, but. Um the forwarder has the transparency on the rates already by today, at least for airlines who display a dynamic rates openly in their internet page. The only thing is that the forwarder needs to enter 20 different pages, combine it in this own yeah. Excel sheet, and then compare it. So what uh, the standardizing um, and, and um, same API approach would offer to the forwarder is more um, an improved customer experience that he can see it all in in one page so it is what definitely the customer needs and i mean if we are not going that way there will be uh, another startup who's exactly doing that for us um and uh, or for the customer to make life easier for it, for the customer yeah i i agree i think this isn't really changing anything to do with the data visibility that the the forwarder has, but I think as Robert mentioned in his presentation, this is about simplifying that data flow and making it efficient. You know, this the, the forwarder knows our individual rates, and in the future with digitization and standardization, the rules of competition are unchanged. We still won't know each other's rates. And we don't need to, we don't want to, we're very happy to compete on price, service, and product. Uh, but the technological standards will just aid communication and create efficiencies and efficiencies will drive new opportunities. Maybe let me add, I mean, in our industry, there are already rate platforms since 10 or more years. And this is exactly what they uh, what they did in the past, that the, uh, or the forwarders loaded their rate sheets there and could compare in on that rate platforms. 
what we're now doing is a new and more um, convenient way. Let, let, yeah, let, let, I, I, I want to add that, that let's turn it around. I think uh, it makes life more easy in, in uh, Anke, that's what you, uh, I think, mean. The benchmarking for a forwarder becomes much more easier. So I think if they, ha if they want to benchmark in their own systems, uh, and it will become dynamic via APIs uh, and, and, and uh, capacity, uh, real life capacity checks from airlines, I think the benchmarking becomes easier. So I, I would not say uh, worry about uh, the transparency of, of rates, but uh, uh, embrace uh, the fact that uh, benchmarking uh, will save uh, a lot of time uh, in future. Uh, and I think that's uh, more or less what's, what's already happening in the, on the passenger side, since uh, we can have the, the comparators everywhere. Um, and uh, there is one one remark from the from the audience, which is uh, very spot on, is that the transparency uh, of the data is only between authorized parties. That's what we what we told in the, in the introduction on on one record. So you you decide what is public in terms of information. So any any sensitive data won't be shared to to anyone. It will only be shared between the, the two uh, associated parties. So one carrier and one client only. Uh, so okay. really that, that's really important because uh, it really tells us that uh, it's not everything is public. Uh, really, on, you only share what you want and you only share with who you want. And that's also very uh, very important. Even if we if we are talking about uh, data sharing and uh, full transparency and everything. Uh, there are some restrictions and some security uh, about sensitive data, so I think it's, uh, it was a, uh, it's a really interesting comment. And and still, it is based on bilateral agreements, eh? so in that sense. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so we have a, a couple of questions. Um, let me have a look at them. Um, first, there was one for you, Anka. Um, can you tell us? If Lufthansa implemented any paperless procedure in the operation side as part of the digitalization. So not very, not only focused distribution, but uh, still interesting, I think. And what's the question there? Sorry. Can you tell us if uh, Lufthansa implemented any paperless procedures in the operation side? Uh, ERVB. Yes, of course. We um, we focus uh, we focus on ERVB already since years, and uh, we just founded the initiative 100% uh, paperless. I think it's also a Yatta initiative that we um, that we uh, eliminate paper. We go um, through all the paper step by step uh, to see where we uh, which paper we still can uh, uh, eliminate because this is a clear objective that we that we uh, at one day uh, fly completely paperless. Okay, thank you, thank you for your for your answer. Um, I'm looking at the the other questions. Um, Um, so there's one, I think it's for me, so it's from Matthias. Sorry, Matthias, I'm saying your name out loud. Um, the question is, isn't there a risk that MCD shifts the focus mainly to the commercial relationship between airlines and forwarders, thus neglecting the requirements of other stakeholders, for example, GHAs, um, and risking that digitalization fails where it adds value in operations um, with regards to handling custom security and everything? Um, I think MCD MCD scope is uh, is really about uh, is really mainly about distribution. I, I don't know. I, I don't have a very strong feeling that uh, other stakeholders such as GHAs might be uh, that much involved in on the distribution side. Um, that doesn't mean that on the one record uh, as a whole. Um, they are, they are not in, uh, they're involved. I think they are strongly. We need to be strongly involved as well um, because we they are really very important stakeholders. But I think from the from the MCD side, uh, we mostly talk about carriers, their customers, and maybe authorities uh, where we have some uh, some needs uh, in terms of information that may be may be required at some stages of the uh, of the booking. But um, from my point of view, um, 
there's no risk uh, there, especially when we talk about MCD. Uh, you know, we don't work on the other topics as well. Oh, and Christoph, if, if you allow me also to add that what I think is strong is that we develop modernizing cargo distribution in the governance structure of one record. So that so the, the data model of modernizing cargo distribution is combined with one record. And I think this makes the data model very strong. So their commercial and operational processes in fact come together. So that that is, yeah, I think uh, where it makes the, the, combina the combination makes it very strong, I would say. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, then there is one last question in the Q&A panel. Oh, no, there was another one that just came up. Um, okay, so it's really a question about, about one record. Uh, what would you recommend to middle and small freight forwarders interested in one record? Where to start? How should airlines help them? Um, as a start, I would say uh, we have many multiple documentation uh, available presentations on what is one record and uh, what exactly is within within it. Uh, there is also always the digital cargo team that, uh, that can be contacted. Um, but the, the, the last question is about should airlines help them? I think it's, it's a good, good uh, question. Um, I don't know what are your, your, your thoughts on that, how to, to integrate more uh, small and uh, middle freight forwarders. Yeah, I have. Yeah, what I think is that that uh, it fully depends also on the on the solution uh, the forwarder is using. So is it using a, an, an own solution or is it uh, buying from a software provider or so? I think what airlines do, uh, how airlines can help, and that's what already is happening, is that by having a developer portal, you can find out much the documentation about how our, our solutions are are working and offered. So um, the, 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 the providing documentation on a, on the API, but also uh, understanding how the API is developed in terms of processes, uh, you can read that in that documentation. So I would say if airlines have APIs, make sure that you have a developer portal where any party, small or big, uh, can find out much more information on that. Let me maybe add that we also have experience that also maybe not small, small forwarders, but medium sized forwarders also go for direct uh, API connects, uh, uh, either, um, as Robert said, um, via the API portal tracking APIs. It's really easy to implement for any technician. So uh, everybody can start and find it out. And for, uh, for booking uh, um, options, maybe that's a little bit more complex to set up, but um, it all depends on your own strategy if you want to go for direct connects with airlines so you need a good it provider but then it's also possible but it, it is also possible to go for another strategy to, to search for an intermediate who can help you out uh, either your own transport management system or a, a platform or another erp provider i don't know cargo community systems there, there are so many uh, parties in the market so um, there are so many strategies. What airlines can help you is to, to really give uh, or share some thoughts from our side on that topic. That's what we do like today and um, also in, in other um, opportunities. And as Robert said, uh, we have the API portal. Um, Air France Calem has also one. So there you find huge variety of, of uh, information. Go there and, and start searching. And if it's not enough, contact the airline directly. Yeah, and I'd agree. I think the, uh, the new technologies that are being used and the open standards that have been adopted make it um, more straightforward now than it has been in the past for, for borders that aren't the big multinationals to uh, to participate directly. But there are also a plethora of suppliers who can, who can support and airlines can, can share what we have with those borders as they, they define their own strategies. Okay, um, I think we almost, we're almost done. Uh, there were just um, two, two last questions that, uh, that I want to answer before before ending the, the webinar. Um, first, we, have, we had a couple of questions uh, talking about blockchain, the fact that one record looks uh, similar to blockchain. 
uh, just a quick comment on that. Uh, I would say yes and no. Um, blockchain is one specific technology about decentralized uh, digital assets. Um, we, we're not really the. It's, it's not it's not about blockchain. Blockchain is just one technology behind. I think uh, one record is on a much higher level uh, than the technology. Of course, the some IDs can can. Can be can can seem to, to to look alike. The fact that we want to people to have their own servers and to be the owners of their own data, uh, so that may look a, a bit like uh, the, the the overall ID of blockchain. But uh, for, for me, at least, blockchain is just one technology that could be used uh, in the end for for what we do. Um, there's no no real plan on doing that specifically uh, or taking another technology at this stage. Uh, because uh, it's, it's up also to, to any, any stakeholders to, to implement uh, the way they want, basically. Uh, we are only working on a standard to, to standardize the data model and the APIs, uh, but not really the technology that, um, that is behind that. So that's just one point I wanted to, to clarify. Uh, and then there was uh, one last question I want to, to ask uh, with us to the three of you. Um, what plans do airlines have to share APIs to new solution like like one record uh, when we talk about some specific uh, specific um, implementation? In terms of airlines sharing our digital standards so that people can connect, or um, as Robert and Kurt mentioned, we have our developer portals so that people can understand what what our APIs look like. Um, is that the the question as to how to connect? Yeah, how to connect and how to connect also to 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 existing um, to, to existing or to existing or future uh, one record um, one record service as well, one record service providers. I'm not sure if I got the question correctly, but uh, what I see is, our, of course, our current uh, design of the API does not yet match the 100% of, of the one record uh, model, because this is a model we are just designing, and it is, uh, it is uh, available at the wall, let's say like this, but not yet uh, available in uh, technology. So uh, there we need still uh, goes, uh, to go some st uh, steps. I think next step would be that we really define some use cases, try it out maybe just with parts of the, of the, of the chain and then uh, go further. And then we have to maybe redesign our API or offer a second one that depends on the airline, how the strategy will be uh, one in record, uh, one record model. And maybe for the parties who are already uh, connected to the old APIs, uh, we, we remain that I don't know, but um, there will definitely uh, be needed some more uh, development uh, also on airline side who provide already APIs. Okay, well, I think that answers the question at least from uh, from what I understood from the question, um, and we'll have a confirmation that that's the question. <laughs> so, uh, good. Um, okay, so I think we've made a very good panel discussion and Q&A session. Uh, I would like really to, to thank you, thank all of you um, who, to, to, to be there, to, to have presented uh, and contributed uh, highly in the panel discussion. Uh, I think we've had a really interesting discussion and presentation, so I'm really grateful for that. Um, and with that, I'd like to, I, I will end this webinar. Uh, the next webinar will be uh, next uh, Thursday uh, about the EU federated project. So it's um, it's an EU EU project, uh, multi-level project that uh, the digital cargo team is working on. One record is um, is part of that. Uh, so that brings uh, some uh, a lot of uh, multi-level approach in uh, in what we do. Um, so I strongly invite you if you are interested in that to to join the next session. And I again would like to to thank uh, my uh, my guests today. Uh, for their participation and Claire as well for the management of the, the webinar. Thank yeah. you, Christophe. Thank you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 See ya.